Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. Welcome back, guys. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us, listening or watching, doing it however you're doing it. Uh, YouTube, the podcast app, SoundCloud, of course. As always, you can find our social media, get in contact, get in touch, tell us how silly we look or sound or behave. All the links are down there. Or I guess if it's SoundCloud, they're over there? No, they're they're They're, there. Under the logo, they're there. Yes. Yes. But I guess you can't see me point, so it doesn't really (laughs) matter. Just read um find it also Go, our fetch. biggest new venture is our website which is up now we are yeah. posting articles there uh we've got i know i've posted at least three at this point maybe four by the time this episode goes up yeah something like that um nobody else has posted anything no nope. big fat goose egg for me um, um you guys all suck i'm learning how to read so once i do that <laughs> okay that's fair should be better all right we gotta write too so after you learn to oh, read God. i know it's a long process but It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. I'm done. Um, this is so, the last you you see or hear of me reading and right. writing. I am now it resolves. Don't tell me there's arithmetic involved as well. Uh, only on Sundays. That's that's oh, that's the day we do things. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, that's right. all I'm gonna say. All right, guys. So we have got a very cool episode for you today, talking about some Commander 2017. We've also got our popper breakdown, finishing out our breakdown series. One thing we do not have this week. Mm, Nope, nope. Um, We posted about deck techs, and we do plan to use that for the next episode, but because we wanted to talk about Commander 2017, and we don't want these episodes to go too much longer than an hour, we can hope it. Yeah. Help it. Hope it. We can hope it and hope it, it, Kevin. We can Um, do both. We're we're sort of omitting the deck tech for this week, but we will be bringing that back next week, so do not worry. Uh, We will go through the postings and pick a deck for that. Um... But our schedule this week, we've got card of the day, which we'll do in just a minute. We got our popper breakdown. Oh yeah, get excited for that. Our first look at Commander 2017. Uh, we've got our question of the week, which we still will go over. And then of course our crack pack sponsored by Grand Slam at oh, yeah. the end. Uh, it's worth noting too, uh, Grand Slam sponsored the Commander 2017 mm-hmm. first look that we did. We live streamed that on Sunday. Um, so if you have not, you should check that out. Absolutely do that. Um, and uh, definitely and check out Grand Slam as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's where we got this product. Uh, they, they were so kind to let us have it early. Yes. Um, and, uh, we are super grateful. Yeah, we are. Right um, they, Grand Slam has been going above and beyond on everything that Heck they've yes. done for us. So we cannot thank yes. them enough. And we really encourage you guys to check them out. They're super nice. They're super helpful. You will not be disappointed. Uh, going to hang out with them so agreed agreed do that agreed um yeah kick cool. it off with the card of the day let's do it all right here Roll we go. that refresh but three two bam, one bam. well i actually really love this card do you yeah okay merfolk of the pearl trident it it's is a one one for one vanilla 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 but it's a merfolk yeah so merfolk of the pearl trident was like the first merfolk it was in alpha yeah beta unlimited it's revised everything been in, so. yeah most sets yeah um and i love uh the pearl trident flavor mm-hmm. i don't know why i just do okay. uh merfolks being one of my favorite tribes um there's not much to talk about this card other than its history and yeah. it has been in everything um <laughs> and it's gotten in new artwork a few times i think it's been like redrawn three or four times yeah i know so Am I no? Okay, so the seventh edition artwork is the one that I for, I got into yes. Magic on seventh edition. So this is the one I'm most familiar with. Yeah, this is um, my first. But they've definitely redone the artwork a few times. It's, I mean, yeah. again, a one one for one is bad. However, because it's a merfolk, yeah. it's going to have so many other buffs from all of the lords. It's going to be unblockable. It's going to be great. So yeah, that's um, that's my second favorite. That's a good one. Uh, so the fifth edition artwork is actually really mm-hmm. cool. But it's very sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite cards just for, I mean, for its history, um, what it's how long it's been around in the game. Yep. Um, it was in one of my first packs I ever opened. You want? Was go, it really? You want to go get that? No, I'm good actually. Okay. I finished what I was writing. <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was. Um, someone got me packs for my birthday. Hey. Um, and I. Oh, thank you. And yeah, it's just it's been, right, old lady. It's been one of my. Fa- uh, oh, that's supposed to me be me as a little boy. Oh, it didn't sound like it. I had a voice like a little flute. 
Anyway, um, I yes, so Scream not explicitly up. on the face of it a very good card. However, in Merfolk decks, well, it's going to get the buff. It's also not really for constructed play. Yes. Um, it's worth noting. Definitely it's, not. There are so many better ones out there that you're going to want to play instead of yeah. this one. That being said, it's filler, right? Yeah. I mean, it's whatever. But it's cool. I like it. It absolutely is. It represents the Merfolk tribe well. Um, so, very good. Um, moving to our popper breakdown. Speaking of Merfolk tribe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, we always sort of have five points for this. What is the format? The history about the format. How it is in its current state. Uh, where you can play it. And then how you're going to get good at it. Yeah. Um, so, let's kick off with what is popper. So glad you asked. Go for it. Biggest, uh, biggest point you can make about popper? It's commons only. There you go. Um, popper differs in power level extremely, I guess you could yeah. say. Uh, the games feel a little different. That being mm. said, some of the most, like, some cards that you wouldn't necessarily expect would be in this format are in this format. So sure. the reason I say that is stuff like uh, Ponder is banned in Modern, right? Yeah. In fact, we did an episode on it. Shameless plug. Uh, it's banned in Modern because it is too good. Yeah. However, it is 100% legal in Popper. Yeah, you can uh, play four of them. You can. And in fact, it is played in a lot of decks. We'll talk about that later. Um, yes. So a lot of very powerful cards mm -hmm. are actually in Popper. And so while you do sort of get some of those games that feel a little bit grindy and maybe not feel as crazy as some of the crazy combo decks, things like that, that you may see in other formats, it is still a very powerful format, or at least sure. can be. For um, sure. So just something to note. Yeah. Um, but uh, commons only, everything other than that is the same, right? Yeah. You have 60 card constructed deck. The cat food just going off. <laughs> uh, That's funny. Other than that, I mean, not much else to no, say. No, not much else to say. That no. being said, though, there is a little bit of history uh, sure. to how Popper started. Do you want to take that as well? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I forgot that that's also when we do it. Uh, so the history <laughs> of Popper is interesting, right? There used to be a format, I believe, called Peasant. Uh, I want to say that's was. correct. Um, there is still Peasant as a format. It's not really widely played. Right, and um, I, I don't believe it was called Peasant when it was around no, in the onset. So either. Basically, the only difference between Popper and what is now Peasant pre-Popper uh is you could play with five uncommons in your deck yep uh until the block that they print uh printed skull clamp dark steel and they realized oh man yeah that's too good so skull clamp if you do not know uh you can equip to target creature it gives the creature plus one minus one mm -hmm. and if that creature dies you draw two cards yeah so you can really exploit this one you can put it on any creature as sort of a buff just in its power level and then right. if it dies you kind of don't care because you get to draw two or you can exploit it with one ones and token strategies by just killing some tokens for very cheap and yep. drawing cards it's repeated card draw yeah um, we talked about the locust god when we that did. was spoiled um skull clamp being endless card draw if you've got the mana for it and yeah yeah that's why um so skull clamp is one of would you say one of the most efficient card draw engines in the game um i would say yes i'm sure there are better examples out there and i'll let you guys comment them below but um for the most part I, it's one of my favorites and i do think it's very mm. very efficient um and it's reliable right like yeah if you have a monastery mentor or a young pyromancer or locust god like there's so many cards it works with because you right. get all of these one one tokens and then as you need to you can sack them away to draw some cards sure. um there's a reason it's banned in modern um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a little too good <laughs> it is it's very very strong yes um so that was that was pre popper really yeah. uh and then once that came out they decided okay well uh it's gonna be commons only yep for now um and that's once it was commons only it really got its own identity mm -hmm. um up until i think 2013 i might have the date wrong you you couldn't play it online how would... i think that's correct i might be wrong too but that I, sounds correct to me. I believe, though, now it is a format recognized by MTGO. It is? Um, and it has its own ban list. Yes, it does. It's got its own ban list. And interestingly enough, um, the like physical game of Popper mm -hmm. used... You were only allowed to use cards that were printed in the common rarity from MTGO. And why that's important is uh, Curd Ape, yep. up until the latest Modern Masters, I believe it is, or it, was it modern or eternal? I think it was modern. 
I think it was the know. first Modern Masters. Uh, they printed Kurt Ape at Common. Yeah. Uh, physically, but he wasn't on MTGO yet. Correct. So until he got there, you couldn't actually play Kurt Ape. Correct. In Popper. Um, just a, a fun Easter egg. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, only uses cards from MTGO, Common. Uh, it's Now it's recognized by Wizards as an official format, though it's... Yep. You won't see it at a Grand Prix or a Pro Tour or anything no, like that. Not. Um, yeah, I think cool. that's uh, yeah, that's about it. I think that's good. Um, so we already touched on it. Does have its own ban list, mm-hmm. being recognized by Wizards as a actual format now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can play it online. It does have its own ban list, and the ban list includes things like Grape Shot, Empty the Warrens, um, yeah. a few of the just very overpowered commons. Uh, Storm being one of the decks that really took over in the beginning, and so they sort of nerfed it very quickly. Um, so it's got like 10 cards on it. I know like cloud post is in there. Cloud of fairies is in there. Uh, just some of the really overpowered commons that sort of took one deck and made it the deck. Uh, and so that's really it though. Again, 10 cards. That's not a lot for a ban list. So not at all. They really don't overly ban things in popper. It's got a very widespread of decks, uh, that are actually pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. And actually we'll go into that now. So the top two right now. At 16% of the meta, mono green aggro is great. Mono blue aggro is also fantastic. Yes. Um, both very, very solid decks, both at 16% uh, and doing quite well. Affinity is also up there. Uh, or- Aurora Hexproof. Aura Hexproof, excuse me. Nice. Not Aurora Borealis. Aurora. Um, <laughs> Kiln Fiend is also up there. Those are sort of some of the aggro Whoa. decks. Kiln Fiend. Um, <laughs> control decks, we see stuff like Demir Control and like Urza Tron. Uh, Urzatron is a very solid deck, uh, as if you don't know, all of the Tron lands were printed at common, and so those can be played. Oh, yeah. Um, Red-Blue Control is also pretty good, and then there aren't really many combo decks. There's a Flicker combo deck, but that's really about it. Um, yeah. Because it's all common rarity, there's not too many things you can exploit in that Exactly, way. exactly. And that was kind of the theme, is that yeah. if you want to talk about Honest Games of Magic, it's pretty much yeah like down to the down to the bone it's um, it's really nice to play popper and know that you're gonna have like a very fair game most of the time most of the time i mean the elves popper deck is a little <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> it can be uh yeah you can drop your hand very quick yes it's, and then refill and do it again it's, it's solid. mean it's, it's really solid yeah. um but there are cards to answer stuff like that electricery hey oh I mean, some, hey yo, elves, elves get buffed. Though. They do, but so. um, you don't get any of the lords, though, do you? Not any of the like notable ones that you'd see in like yeah. modern or what have you. I mean, you kill elvish mystic, Lanowar elves. If he's if he's a vanilla symbio, one, one, whatever you do. it is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, it's it's a very True. diverse format. You do get a lot of good decks, uh, fun decks that are definitely down on power level from mm-hmm. some of their counterparts. Uh, for instance, Red Deck wins is going to be a little less good than you would see in something like Modern. Right. However, it's still a very fun deck, and it does its job efficiently. I mean, yeah, this um, this is a, a format you can find um, a lot of good videos on. Uh, I'll plug another channel, uh, yeah. Popper Fox on YouTube, oh, yeah. is where I get a lot of my like deck ideas, gameplay strategies yep. for Popper. Um, they have really well-made videos that are informative and interesting um i encourage you guys to go check them out if you're interested in the format um popper fox fox like the animal yep um yeah yeah, so you showed me popper fox Mm -hmm. i actually really like his videos as well very clean and very solid and he does a good job um very quickly let's go over the top 10 cards in popper sure just to give you an idea of the cards you're going to see some of these you'll know from other formats uh but notably not from things like standard or modern which i think is really interesting so Number one being played is Pyroblast. Uh, yeah. Number two, Lightning Bolt. It makes sense. Number three, Preordain, arguably one of the best draw spells. Yeah. Uh, number four, Counter Spell. Again, yeah, it makes sense. Very cool. Five, Hydroblast. Makes sense. Number six, Prophetic Prism uh, for okay. the Urzatron deck. <laughs> number seven, Ponder. I mean, yeah, makes sense. Number eight, Dispel. Anything? Did say anything? No, it makes sense. Okay. Uh, number nine, Electricer. No! No, 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 that's I fine. I love Electricer. No, that's fine. It makes uh, sense. It makes yeah. sense in this format. There's a lot of one ones, things like that you can nerf with it. Uh, and then number 10, Relic of Progenitus. Kind of makes sense for graveyard decks. I banged my wedding ring on the table. Does it feel bad? And like, my little ring finger's a little bit tingly a right little, now. Well, sorry about that, but also not because you're making fun of Electricer. Owie. That's what you get. Yeah, uh, 
a little tidbit about like trickery it does make perfect sense in popper thank you where you can abuse plenty of one one strategies and token strategies and this that and the other and yeah decimates elves and all that stuff so no it makes sense it makes sense go it, on this is the only format you'll ever see it anyway, done <laughs> not true actually boy i saw it in a legacy sideboard Ooh, what a fool who played that uh against mentor i don't think so um i anyway. mean okay but they're just like against young pyromancer i don't think so seems pretty good but now that mentor's in there they don't play young pyromancer anymore not true red blue delver plays young pyromancer uh, don't fight me on some, legacy i know some more about of the legacy list, <laughs> so none of the lists we've looked at recently have young pyromancer in it i know because mm. we were doing deck text and i was gonna do anyway i was gonna do red blue I didn't have Young Pyro. Anyway. I'm just saying. No, they play it. Okay. I still like it. They're a lightning bolt away from <laughs> making like Trick reuse this. <laughs> if they're holding any other instant. You done? You good? It's fine. This it's a good is, card. I could go back and forth. It is It is fine and popper. Anyway. It is fine. Um, so that sort of gives you an idea of the cards you're going to see. A lot of them mm. are not cards that you regularly see in some of these other formats, but... You see them in Legacy, you see yeah. some of them in Modern, you see some of them in different places, and that's what's really cool about it, is Popper feels like this sort of culmination of all of these really cool cards. I like that. Uh, yeah, it does. It feels... You you feel like you get more value out of these cards, yeah. which it can promote bad habits if you're, like, drafting, because yes. you can overvalue things. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, that's, like, circumstantial and, yeah, yeah. like, subjective to the person. But, that being said, <laughs> um, yeah, you get, you you pull tricks out of commons that you, you're not used to. Mm -hmm. So, it's a fun exercise for any experienced magic, magic player yep. to play Popper. I think. And on the other side of things, for any new player uh, to magic, Popper is a fantastic way to play a very powerhouse format that can be powerhouse. Or... Uh, without actually having to pay too much and what i say well, when the, i say uh, okay. the powerhouse format i mean you get access to very powerful cards things like lightning bolt like counterspell all of these really good cards but that aren't overly crazy overly used necessarily sure. they're just very good cards so you get to play them um and really you can build a very competitive popper deck mm. for around about 50 bucks easy right like you yeah, don't even have even to pay 50 bucks um mm -hmm. a lot of the decks are very cheap Let's look at mono green aggro really quick. So this one, 70 or 58, I'm sorry, on TCG player for a very solid mono green aggro deck. Like, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I know Urzatron might be a little more. Yeah, $74 yeah, for Urzatron. Yeah. But then you look at something like Burn, which I'm assuming is going to be less. No, it is not. Holy crap. Didn't expect that. I guess because Rift Bolt and... Hold up a second, people. Fire Blast is up there, Gitaxian Probe. It's a few oh, two dollar okay. cards, lightning bolt. Okay. That makes sense. But that's weird that Red Deck Wins is like the most expensive popper deck. I mean that's not even like Red Deck Wins though, right? That's Well it's burn, I mean Yeah. Which uh, I, I Deep guess Deep Shadow's up there too. Or uh No, that makes Ninja sense. Deep Hours, yeah. But that makes sense. Gush and yeah. Delver and some of the more expensive Manalik, cards. But Brainstorm. generally you're gonna be able to build a deck for very cheap. Um, if you've got a bulk box anywhere, I would say go through it and see mm -hmm. if you have any cards that are actually viable uh, for yeah. Popper, because a lot of times you will find a few. Um, I know I've done that on a very regular basis. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great way to intro players into playing Magic. Uh, it gives the feeling of a very competitive format without actually having to spend too much, and that's yeah, what's that's really great true. about it. Um, you can also play online, obviously, we've already mentioned that, but you can play online, you can play, they've got tournaments and leagues and stuff. I know we actually did yeah, a we, few leagues, I think. We piloted the uh, hex proof, proof yeah. Um, which is very fun deck. Relative success. Uh, yeah, we got better with it as time uh -huh. went on, uh, but it is a very straightforward deck, right? And that's I mean, what's true. so cool about true, it. True. Um, so very good format. As far as where you can play it, definitely online. You can also, because it is so cheap, get a few friends and just go and purchase some decks. Like, it's not yeah. difficult to do that. So, I would say, if you've got a few friends and you haven't tried Popper, try Popper. Hey. It'll be good. Do you have friends? If you don't. We hope so. I'm really sorry. You come hang out with us. Um, yeah. Uh, and where to get good. How are you going to get good? So that's a tricky thing to answer. Um, online is the easiest one. 
obviously. there are there are far few less physical tournaments oh yeah i'd say right no i think that's fair um they're, they're not i'm not gonna say hard to find or impossible at that but you know with it being not a uh tour- touring format yeah you know wizards doesn't uh sponsor it really anywhere mm-hmm. um it's not got the biggest uh highlight right you could say it's not got a huge huge following but right. it's a format that people will play because it's cheap yeah i mean you it's so much uh, it's so much less investment than any other format yeah that it doesn't take much to get people into it um it's just a matter of keeping with it and a lot of people don't do tournaments for it for that reason um yeah but it is fun i know i enjoy it quite a lot we've actually played with the idea of doing a popper cube uh which would be really yeah, fun we did um and that is a different way to play it obviously there's constructed tournaments mm-hmm. however um popper cubes we did popper a popper drafts are we did fun. a popper cubelet we did do a popper cubelet that it was, was quite fun um yeah. how'd that go i don't remember that was went, a while ago yeah i think kind of went back and forth yeah, yeah. we had so. wild mongrel in there and um a lot of it is the games sort of play out on the board a lot more i would say definitely uh because you are playing with all common rarities so you're going to get a lot of board presence is what you're hoping for um i'd say a lot of the time i mean definitely for your mono green aggro mono blue aggro um although they have a a few more tricks and whatnot Mm -hmm. they counter things um and i guess really maybe not the red deck the burn decks right red deck wins maybe but burn like that list has eight creatures yeah so Yeah, yeah Um, but you will see a lot of sort of low the ground creatures mm-hmm. and then some just really big creatures things like Gurmag angler are widespread in any black deck just because it's a solid beater Heck yeah. um that's all you really need Heck yeah. so it it very much rewards big creatures which is nice very um, true so to get good yeah just practice online and try and get some friends into it it won't take much to get into it no it's it. pretty fun um i know we enjoyed our time playing with it so Absolutely. i would suggest though starting online it's even cheaper online yeah so like if that gives you an five idea, bucks for a deck you can make a popper deck for like 10 bucks no yeah. problem like if that it's pretty insane um so yeah that's about it though i mean popper is a pretty straightforward format there's not a ton to it it's just I'd common agree. rarity only um and very fun very short ban list so not too much to worry about there either i'd agree there are sort of um evolved versions versions of popper there's an uncommons only Mm -hmm. that doesn't have a name it's just uncommons only um there is peasant still which is limited amounts of uncommons Mm -hmm. um so people have toyed with making this format different in ways it just kind of always comes back to popper is one of the most fun yeah it is Um, the most fun i think kind of inexplicably uh like you could say kind of the same things for the uncommon Mm -hmm. uncommons only like less powered than modern or standard or anything like that but i mean there's still plenty of synergies at uncommon yeah yeah absolutely so it's um, interesting go yeah, play it. it's branch I would out it. you can't it's only play good... commander yeah. <laughs> alex <laughs> <laughs> as you're editing this video you'll know what we're talking about um all right so that's about it for popper um that's rounds out our series actually the mini series for huh. our breakdowns finally we got through all of them um so we really enjoyed this mini series but it's also really nice to have a little bit more freedom with the episodes and this felt a little constricting for sure for sure um hopefully this is helpful to some people i know we got a comment on our standard breakdown that somebody mentioned that it was very helpful for them i was very we appreciate that feedback yeah um if these videos have helped you at all please let us know we'd love to hear from you heck yeah um but with that we moved to Commander 2017. The reason you're probably all here right now. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, Commander. Yeah. This was super fun. Yes. Getting our hands oh, on this man. stuff. Um, again, we should need to mention Grand Slam. I know we're plugging them a lot this episode, but yeah. it's because they have done so much for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. So um, bear us that small indulgence uh, yeah. in thanking our friends over there. Yes. Uh, they are rock stars. They, they are, are solid. They are near and dear. They're the best. To our guys. Field, our Go field hang place. out with them. Um, our hearts. That's what I meant. By in that. here? In there. You have one? I didn't know. Um. Anyway, here's the deal. Uh, oh, we went to Grand Slam. They said they would like to sponsor an episode. This episode. We said, <laughs> we said if you insist. And um, they provided us with all four of the commander decks oh, for the 2017 boy. round. Um, with which we had a lot of fun on the live stream. 
Uh, we may actually stream some more. I don't know if we get some time, maybe, just because it's fun, but we'll see about yeah. that. Um, two of the decks that we started out with, mm. uh, it was just one-on-one. -on -one. I should also right. mention that. It's our fir first look sort of video. It's not like a full-on commander game. Yeah, we, we just wanted to test the decks a bit. We are potentially, we are kicking around an idea of, of getting, uh, you know, team stream and... Team stream and... <laughs> and podcast peeps together to <laughs> mash up. But until that day, yes, yes, it was just Kevin and I playing against each other. Uh, so, so what deck did you go with? Uh, I went with the I forgot what wizards uh, wizards called it, but it is the wizard deck. It's yes. the uh, Grixis wizard deck. And I went with Vampiric Bloodlust because I remembered the name. Nice. <laughs> Owned. No, I'm Why just kidding. Is it? Like I don't remember something um, campy. Anyway, magical m m card time. Pew <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> Do you want to start off and talk about your deck? Um. Uh, sure. Do you want to talk about the games? Or well, let's talk about the games the... first. Let's talk about that first. We did play a uh, game with these two decks and then with the other two. Yes. Um, We'll talk about these first because we went with those first. Sure. And they're more interesting than the other two. So the, the game, game was... The game was super uh, back and forth. Yes. At about turn six or so. It sort of switched there. Yeah. I thought I was done for. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, Edgar Markov doing the most. Yeah, he kind of comes out in in, <laughs> in in stride. Yeah. Does some work. He is awesome. He is. Eminence is broken a little bit. Yeah, we'll take a pause to talk about Eminence for a second. So, yeah. what are your thoughts on Eminence as a new mechanic? Okay, well, first of all, what is it? We need to define that for anybody that doesn't know if you're watching this and you don't know. Sure. Basically, Eminence is a mechanic that works whether the card is in your command zone or on the battlefield. So it works yeah. both ways. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to play the commander to get value mm -hmm. out of the commander. So, for instance, Edgar Markov, <clears throat> his Eminence ability, whenever you cast another vampire spell, if he is in the command zone or on the battlefield, I create an additional 1-1 one, one black vampire token. Yep. So basically I get two for one on all creatures. That's sweet. Awesome. Yeah. Super, super good. I don't have to pay anything to get that. I just get it. Yeah. Super nice. And because it's on the battlefield or in the command zone, I get that value all the time. Inala's is a little different um, in that whenever a non-token wizard enters the battlefield under my control, if she's in the command zone or on the field, I can pay one, tap one mana to create a token, a copy of it. Mm -hmm. It gains haste, and then I exile it at the end step. Um, so, yeah, a little less good in that I have to, I have to pay for something. Yeah. But that... That token's the gonna... ceiling is higher for for this though, Absolutely. right? Like Absolutely. you're able to copy any creature you play. Yeah, um, and that's which very is nice. So good with yeah. some of these creatures, it's insane. Yeah, some of these these wizards <laughs> come down and they're very big, very yeah. scary. Like copying um, the Ethereum Horn Sorcerer would be nuts. really good because it has cascade. Um, Two cascades. <laughs> <laughs> so the game itself definitely as we mentioned swung uh from one side to the other uh, yes it right did. around the turn six mark so the edgar markov deck is the deck that i played and it came out swinging guns blazing took you down to like in the teens on life i want to say am i incorrect in saying yeah that? i was in 20s at that point 20s okay um i got you down to six by the end of the game yep uh yes. but you obviously took home the win you were able to stabilize Eventually. and just um wreck house yeah so really that's the strength i think that i found in the wizards deck at least in that game having mm -hmm. played a one of um i was able to put out some big wizards yep uh that just kind of stemmed the tide a little bit mm -hmm. right um so the two i had out for a long time we'll go into i just some some of the cards that we mm -hmm. really like from it uh tygum sidisi's hand and the mercurial chemister chemister chemster <laughs> Hair, all of the above uh so the chemister pay one uh pay one blue tap yep. draw two cards or pay red tap discard a card and it deals damage to target creature equal to the discarded cards cmc um so this card was really nice as either a sniper or card advantage mm -hmm. i used it mostly as just card advantage at the end of turn after a block or something uh tygum sadisi's hand was exceptional yeah uh skip my draw step oh no <laughs> at the beginning of my upkeep, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You pay one black, tap it, exile X cards from your graveyard, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. I misread that. Thought it was a pump spell. It's not a pump spell. Found it's out it was spell. way better. Yeah. Uh, I would have been shrinking dudes had I known the entire time. 
So one of the strengths, <laughs> these fat guys, the chemistry's a two three, which is okay. Tigum is at three four for five with this effect. Wow, talk about big butts. Value city. Um <laughs> this was this helped me get a lot of uh answers, a lot of options, mm-hmm. um, things to respond to Kevin's board to. It uh, helped pick off a lot of the one ones that I was creating yeah, as well. That as well. It it, <clears throat> it definitely hosed the uh nicer effects there because i can do it at the end of turn mm. after um after blocks or something like that that's profitable one answer it did help me find oh, God. polymorphs jest i hate this card mass turn to frog it's so annoying you know this was oh. someone's favorite blue card and in the episode i was like polymorphs jest that's kind of silly oh it's no so good let me tell you oh, this card gosh. i killed markov yeah i turned him into a witty witty toad it was so annoying with it <laughs> so i was like not in a winning position but like a turn before winning position yes had that attack gone through he would have been in lethal range next turn 100 percent. and then you turned everything to a frog yep and that was really annoying and i blocked and i ate him for lunch yeah it was frustrating for sure i hate that card so it was it was fantastic uh another super sweet answer clone legion uh oh, this card one of my favorites i think yeah from the deck um and i i had it like in my opening hand did you really yeah. i didn't know you held on to it that long yeah so uh clone legion is a sorcery for uh nine for each creature target player controls create a token that's a copy of that creature yeah right so i was saving it thinking i'll let him build his board and then have tokens of everything he has mm-hmm. what ended up happening is you played butcher of malakir i believe mm-hmm there's a cat below the table, by the way. It really me wants attention. It's really it's super funny. He's brushing our feet <laughs> with his fuzziness. So anyway, Clone Legion, Butcher says whenever a uh, creature you control dies, uh, I have to sack a guy. Correct. This helped in that I had replacements. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. It's really annoying. Yeah, I was kind of holding on to it, like waiting if he caught back <laughs> up. I'll just get all of his things. Oh no, something better. <laughs> Let me do it now. Your deck is nothing but annoying cre- or annoying cards, I would say. You want to talk about the most annoying? <sighs> Go for it. Having Gull Lich. This is one of my favorite cards from before this because it's so strong. I have to make this joke. Go ahead. I have 99 problems, and this time a Lich was one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 99 problems, but a Lich ain't one. I had to, I mean, come on, it's right there. Years 94 and the cards are raw don't <laughs> don't <laughs> anyway uh so the lich is fantastic it is a four four for five already it's pretty sweet yeah uh pay one you may cast target creature card in a graveyard this turn when you cast that card this turn the lich gains all activated abilities of that card until end of turn pretty good and that's where the text stops you get to reanimate stuff and give the lich its powers <laughs> so what I did was killed all of its vampires and I brought them back to life. You the, enjoy that? Yes. You really enjoy that? The only reason I won. Yeah, uh, 100% the only reason. Because what this this deck lacks is really strong, aggressive plays. Yeah. You know, uh, Inala has got a really good damage effect in that it says tap five untapped wizards you control, target player loses seven life. That's mm-hmm. your commander. So the goal of this deck, create a bunch of wizards, make tokens of them all, tap a bunch, you lose seven life. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty that's good. That's sweet. No, sir, you know, no says I. I never played my commander once. No, you didn't. I had my commander. I don't think that's a... Com- <laughs> good? Happy with that? Um, yes. All right. Good. Yeah, his deck's anno- his deck is annoying. It was definitely the tempo plays that you needed that you drew, and it was frustrating. Um, yeah, I mean that's what I'll say. I don't think it's a very like super strong deck. I don't think so either. Strong. But I think if it stabilizes, it's it's hard fantastic. to dig it out. Yeah. Um, I was gonna make sure. I was gonna make a Korean War joke. I'm not gonna though. Okay. Because bunkers they had the 
Anyway, so I played the vampire deck. Right. And so we already talked about Edgar. He was awesome. He was able to pump out vampires. He is insanely strong. And then also pump them up once I played Edgar, uh, which I did once or twice. I think just once. Just once, yeah. Um, but he really, really swung the game in my favor very early on. Um, yeah. So a fantastic card. Uh, other cards that were really, really helpful because I kept getting 1-1s, I really wanted buffing of any oh, kind. Yeah. Buffing uh, the vampires. Buffing layers? the vampires layers. Uh, all the jokes this episode. Door of Destinies was great for that. Uh, it didn't right. stick around as long as I wanted to. Will. Uh, Reckless but charm. It really did some work. Uh, Stormkirk Captain, uh, which is a two-two vampire for three with first strike, and it gives all my other vampires plus one plus one and first strike as well. Yep. That stuck around on the field for the first few turns and just did some major work. Uh, oh, it got yeah. some damage in. Made blocks very. Uh, not profitable. No, we'll I, say. I don't want to block at all. No. Uh, so it was really, really, Until really, really was great. Broke. Anyway, uh, so this deck suffered a bit from not really finding the answers I needed to find, and mm. it could have just been that I had a bad shuffle or I didn't draw as well. Um, but the cards that helped me sort of get to some answers, Underworld Connections is just a great card, uh, oh, especially absolutely. in Commander when you have a bunch of life to play with. You just absolutely. get to draw an extra card every turn. Uh, Path of Ancestry is a new land that was printed in this uh, that I really liked. So it basically lets you add a mana of any color that your mana uh, that your commander identifies with. That's what I was trying to say. You um, got there. You got there. Yeah. And then if it shares, if you play it to play a creature spell that shares a type with that commander, you get to scry one. And so this helped me sort of dig through the top of my deck and get rid of some of the problematic or non-helpful cards. We'll say. Um, sure. One of the best creatures for me was Patron of the Vein, which is a 4-4 four, four for oh, 6 with God. flying. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls, so yeah, already it's great value. Really uh, and it has whenever an, a creature and opponent controls dies, exile it, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on every vampire you control. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, it really buffed rough. my team a lot. It mm -hmm. got rid of your weird kill Tigum. guy thing. Tigum, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was pretty sweet. You ended up stealing it, though, when I'm mad about it. Um, and then I copied it. I had to. Yeah, that was really annoying. Um, the card that I was most impressed with, though, I love this card. Okay, yeah. Little. This card is awesome. This is probably the best from the onset, in my opinion. Yeah. This is the best that we played with, excluding maybe the dragon from the second game. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, so. This is. This card, it, it was spoiled. A lot of people know what it does already because it's just a fantastic card, but yeah. Teferi's Protection. Two and a white for oh, an instant. God, it's good. Until your next turn, your life total cannot be changed. You have protection from everything, and all permanents you control phase out. Yep. And then you exile to Fairy's protection. So yep. here's what happened. You tried to sweep the board. Sure did. With and this I guy. said no. Kindred dominance. Yeah. Uh. So I just, in response, used Fairy's protection to phase everything out. Yep. And that was it. I couldn't take any damage. Nothing could hit me. That spell costs three. Costs three. That's insane. Three. It's just a counter to a board wipe. Three. <laughs> uh, it is absurdly good. It's very, very good. Yeah. Um, I love that card. It's one of my favorites from this set, uh, and it saved my butt for a turn at least. But Certainly. Um, yeah, so overall, like the way I would sort of describe these decks, I think the Markov deck is generally more powerful on the onset, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be yeah. able to deal tons of damage super early uh, and build up a very good board presence. However, uh, if you can stabilize with the wizard deck, you will wreck house. It's super, super good. I am like, I don't know. Okay. Um, Reason I say that is it is lacking its really strong win con. Um, I feel like it could come apart pretty easy. I think so, maybe. Out of the box, this has one counter, I think. Is it really only one? Yeah, it's like that Dem um, Silumgar spell. Hold on. Uh, Silumgar's command, oh, okay. I think, is the only one. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't do a great job of defending its win conditions Sure. in the scant view it has. <laughs> Um, you draw cards for days. Yeah. Plenty of cards will draw you things. Yeah. Um, that being said, though, it needs 
you you definitely have to like play to your opponent's strengths to a point, and yeah. that's exactly what I did when I stole your your big guys. Um, yeah. If what I'm trying to say is, if you're tweaking this deck, think of it kind of as a control deck with this bonus combo <laughs> of the wizard seven life snipe, yeah, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Uh, I feel like it's missing a like a thing. You know what I mean? I think I understand what you mean. Um, like, and I would, I think, agree as well. Like, it doesn't feel like there's a board state that it wants to get more than mm. any other in that it just kind of wants to be in an advantageous position. Like, most decks do. I but, was reading cards. I'm not even sorry. paying attention to what So, you're like, for, <laughs> for the vampire deck, yeah, yeah. you want Edgar Markov out. You yeah. want to be swinging. That's the board state you want to produce. Mm -hmm. Like, this wants a bunch of wizards. Yeah. It, it doesn't have a specific thing it's really going for it's just sort right. of combo heavy like that's what you want are little mini combos that sort of come out of it is what it felt like to me yeah. where you can sort of destroy cards with one card and then bring them back with another or do something yeah, along, the, along that line and that's kind of what most of the interaction is going to be a lot of graveyard yeah. interaction you yeah, can yeah. copy instants and sorceries you can cast them from the graveyard mm -hmm. so that's nice um snapcaster be a great addition um torrential gear hulk would also be a great addition you mean fat caster fat caster sorry <laughs> uh, oh, I laughed so hard when that was brought to my yeah. attention. Um, yeah, so tweaking the deck, it's it's missing its, like, sledgehammer, but... Yep, no, I understand. You know what I mean? I get you. Um, should we very briefly talk about how the other game went? Yeah, so um, we played the Cats and Dragons deck against each other. Yeah. Uh, Kev had dragons, I had cats. Um, and I got <laughs> mollywopped in, like, four turns, five turns? <laughs> Maybe five. Basically, on turn I three, I had a dragon out. Okay, that so it was, was like a six, but probably. whatever. But on turn three, I got a dragon out, which supposedly costed five, and it costed four because of the Ur dragon. Um, like that I was able to ramp it out. It was Ooh. so good. Basically, it was oh. a four three flyer. Nothing too crazy there. However, anytime an opponent played a spell of any kind, mm -hmm. uh, it got a plus one plus one counter, and I gained a life. Yeah. And then I had lightning greaves, so I just lightning greaves it. And so it couldn't die. And it turned out, I think by the end of it, it was like an 8-7 or like a 9-8 or something crazy yeah, something like stupid. that. Um, I also was able to get Ojitai out uh, very, very early to tap down your stuff. So yeah. basically you had no way of getting out of it. And then you also well, didn't draw well. I just needed to draw removal. And you didn't draw removal. Well. You drew one. It doesn't really. Right? The deck doesn't have removal is the problem. It's got condemn. Yeah, you condemned Ojitai. Which is cool. But that's it. Yeah, so really? that's what I don't really get. Like, the vampire deck has Swords to Plowshares. Uh, Terminate is in a deck. Like, there's... It's in, um... It's in that one, correct? Yeah. Uh, the wizard deck. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are good removal spells that they were willing to print in this Path, set. Path, Swords. Why didn't they put any of the good ones in the cat deck? I don't get that either. Um, the there's... cat deck was the one I was most excited for off the face of it, and now it's the one I'm least excited about. Yeah, like, on the onset, I was like, sweet, a cat tribe, but yeah. no, it's cat equipment. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't do it for That's me. That's less exciting. I um, guess because cats like to play with stuff. That makes sense, right? Yeah, swords and skull clamps and things like that. I what do love cats playing. play with? That one's playing with my backpack right now, so... <laughs> just kind of chilling. Um, hey. As far as power level goes, I think we agree on this that vampires probably the most powerful. Um, I think that the dragons is in a commanding position if it goes well. If it goes well, that that deck is a gamble in that its yeah. mana is a problem sometimes. Usually, yeah, sometimes um, it wasn't the game that we played at all. No, um, I actually had really good mana, but you played normally three cards. <laughs> We'll pour that out. You played three cards. That's fine, but I had all five of my colors on turn two because I had command tower. I also was able to get tr two or three tri lands out. Like I had, sure, sure. I had the mana I needed. Vivid lands. It has all five. Um, anyway, uh, I yeah. think the dragon deck probably has the highest ceiling, but yeah, the vampire deck itself, just off the face of it, is super quick and mm -hmm. super powerful. Yep. So I would generally say the the vampire deck is probably the most powerful with the dragon sort of coming in second. Yeah, I I guess I could concede that and that it's probably more consistent. Yeah. Right. Um I think probably the cat deck 
or the wizard deck? Where the do you cat, think the, on those? I think the cat and then wizard. I think Alex was absolutely right when I he think told so. us. Um, the reason is, if the cat deck goes off, it's got yeah, yeah. so many ways to make a bunch of 2-2 two, two tokens, not 1-1s. One, yeah. 2-2s. Two, uh, give its really fat cats equipment and just start... Just do so much damage. ...being really aggressive, and yeah. it is. So the commander even gives a cat plus 3 plus 3 yeah. at the beginning of combat. Yep. So... You can have absurdly powerful cats really quick. Yep. Um, yeah, I think I think it's probably it could be very very. Strong. I think so too. I think we had just a bad gameplay matchup at that point. I mean, yeah. I but... don't think you necessarily drew great, and I think my deck drew very well. Oh well, yes, I mean, um, which that happens. I yeah, mean, that's part of it. To... But I think to have that on a, we're basing more of what we know off of that game, and I don't think that's necessarily a fair assessment. No, not at all. Um, um, so, but from looking over through the deck, yeah. I think it's it's probably it could put up a fight. It just needs kind of a needs a fresh start. Yeah, it ramps very well because it's in green. It's got a lot of like yes. look for forests and stuff. Yep. So, um, it could be very good. On the face of Commander 2017, I am happy with this product. I really like it. I am happy. Uh, less satisfied than I thought I would be, I'll okay. say. Um, I think last year's Commander was better. Well, yeah. I'm going to say. I mean, that and was potentially the best year of Commander. I think the first one was. When uh, they printed okay, the, yeah, uh, that's fair. But I think being a Traxa and all that stuff, like that was well, pretty good. <laughs> Traxa was like, <laughs> yeah, A+. Plus. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think those decks kind of synergized a little better. They yeah. were more like fluid. Yep. Maybe I'm thinking about like, like Yidris Atraxa synergizes mm-hmm. so well. So um, cool, but I do I do really like these yeah. decks. Um, I think they're, they're fun. fun, and they brought back some of my favorite cards. They did so. Uh, I like that they did tribal stuff too. I just think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I think this year is yeah. like sort of tribal year, or at least it will Honestly, be. Honestly, right. Cause, yeah, because the dual deck coming out is what Merfolk and Goblins. Yeah, Merfolk and Goblins, and this then is I mean tribal commander. Uh, Ixalan is really focused on tribes, dinosaurs, merfolk, and, and merfolk and pirates, and then uh, iconic masters is supposed to be focused on creatures. Yeah, the tri- iconic like creatures tribal of... creatures. Yeah. So yeah, I think a bit of a tribal year. I'm yeah. cool with that. I like tribal stuff. I mean, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I'm just gonna get. I'm going to get tired of talking about tribe, 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 tribe. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, rounding out the episode, we'll talk very quickly about the question of the week. Yeah. Uh, we've, As you guys know, we've been doing sort of the favorite cards in each color, sort of cycling through those. Uh, this week was green. What was your favorite green card? Uh, I haven't tallied these up. We're just going to go through some of them. What's your favorite green card? That's a really good question. I don't know that I know. Um... So some suggestions, maybe. I actually really like people. Locus of Mana. Do you? I really do. Omnath. That's really a pretty fun. good one. Yeah. Um, Primeval Titan and E Witness were suggested. Death Rite Shaman. Uh, Might of Old Oaks suggested Might of Oaks. <laughs> uh, Rancor, Arbor Elf, and the John Avon Unhinged Forest. <laughs> uh yes. goif was in there. Doubling season. Slippery oh, Boggle. Doubling season, of course. That's yeah. my favorite. Double That's a good season. one. Noble Hierarch. Uh, Robin Up, Excavator. Tokens. Sweet. Uh, Harmonize. Very good. Nissa World Waker. Uh, Asceticism. Harmonize, though? Harmonize is great. I love Harmonize. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's card draw- drawing green. Exactly, but like it's card drawing green. It's not like... That's good. Not to criticize your favorite. I mean, I like it. It's not the best in the world, but it's really cool. Uh, Experiment one, Malira. Oh, Experiment one's so much fun. It is fun, right? Mana Gorger Hydra. Nice. Uh, Invigorate, Tooth and Nail. Heck yeah. Uh, to do Seasons Past. That's an interesting one, I think. Uh, World Spine Worm, a great Ooh. target for Crater Tooth Hoof. and Nail. Crater Hoof's another good Crater Hoof is up there. Primal Surge. You must get in touch with Alex. Uh, <laughs> Champion of Ronos, a newer card. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the green put something. Yeah. Uh, and might have old Crosa things like that. Pretty cool. Uh, the cat monkey was also suggested. <laughs> the new oh um slippery Bandor or something Bandor uh, something like that. Who gets indestructible? Scrounging Bandor Bandor. That might that be it? it. That might be it. Um, bristling the, Hydra the for another monkey. newer card. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. I really like these. The next one will be red. 
had to look at the back of the card to remember the list. We're right. going in reverse Wooberg. Yeah, we're like not doing it in the right order at all. Uh, but yes. Actually, we're not even going reverse. We went blue, no. white. Blue, white, green, green red. then red, black. Because we make sense on this show. Um, uh, we aim to break the mold. We aim to um, disappoint. Um, <laughs> in theory. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for your suggestions. Obviously, we look forward to hearing what is your favorite red card in the next episode. We'll talk about those. Hmm. Yeah, um, well, is it? <laughs> what's my favorite green card? Uh, I had one that was really good and I forgot it. Oh, Binge Vine. I really oh, like Vengevine. Oh, yeah, dude, Vengevine's fun. That's actually the card, that, the art that I posted was Vengevine because it is my favorite. Nice. Um, I love Vengevine. Nice. It's so cool. Um, so, finishing up, we have our cracker pack It's the final segment. Uh, I can throw this paper away. That didn't go anywhere. Um, wow. That was really bad. So. What is that? Was that on something? This is Toki. Oh. <laughs> um, these packs, obviously, as well as the commander stuff, all sponsored by Grand Slam. Go check yeah. them out for like the fifth time this episode. You need to. That's um, fine. Hey, I'll say it again. Guys, Lamb! What's your goal card, my friend? My goal card is still Torment of Hailfire. Even though I stated in the past, it's not on that train anymore. I'm running beside the tracks. I'm still <laughs> following it to see where it goes, but I'm Ooh. less convinced it's going to be exceptional. Oh. Okay, um, mine's Fraying Sanity, but I didn't get it. What'd you get? Uh, Overwhelming Splendor. Oh, nice. So this is a really sweeper. interesting card. Yeah, 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 so six and two white enchant player. Oh, no. It's not, not a sweeper, no. That's not what I was thinking. Creatures, uh, your, the enchanted player controls lose all abilities and become one once. Uh, enchanted player can't activate abilities that are not mana or loyalty abilities. So I've seen this being uh, taken in draft, and it seems really cool. So I think I'm going to take it. Uh, I also did get a foil resolute survivors, which is good if you're in Boros. Uh, strategic planning is a decent spell. That's so freaking good. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Inferno Jet's also quite good, and Razakest wow. Right. Uh, all interesting cards, but I would probably oh. take Splendor. I just think that's sweet. <laughs> I didn't get my goal card. I got. We got both Mythics. Good Majestic God. Miriarch. Oh, we did. Hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is sweet. Majestic Miriarch's power and toughness are each equal to twice the number of creatures he controls. <laughs> Put it in the cat deck. Uh, at the beginning of each combat, trust me, you're welcome. At the beginning of each combat, if you control a creature with flying, Majestic Miriar gains flying until end of turn. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Life Link, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. I like this ability. Wow, that's yeah, good. So there was another card that they printed in like Fate Reforged or something that when you it was a delve card and when you delved cards with keywords on them it gained those keywords mm. which was really really cool um it didn't end up being all that good uh however this i think is so much better because you don't have to exile Heck anything yeah. you just have to have them right like it's awesome so other cards in my deck spellweaver my deck my pack spellweaver eternal and dauntless Aven are the only other two i consider picking um and definitely not first pick what about supreme um, will oh okay Supreme Will is pretty good. No, I, yes, I really, really like Supreme Will. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of them to your hand. The rest on the bottom. Yeah, no, I actually really, really like Supreme Will. Um, yeah. I still not first picking it, but not no, over is, the. Yeah, <laughs> but still absolutely consideration. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Sweet. Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I ain't mad Two at those. Mythics. That's interesting. I ain't mad at Dim's pull. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, this forest doesn't look too bad. I actually really like the bolas. People are full whining arts. about the bolas full arts. Why? I don't know. They're sweet. People think they're ugly. Well, I'm sorry. Some people are wrong, man. That's okay. You can be wrong. Yeah. Um, thank you again to Grand Slam, obviously, for providing packs and keeping Dang. us going. That was a good throw. Thank you. Wow. Um, I was hoping to hit your guitar. You didn't. <laughs> at all. Um, anything else we wanted to mention in this episode? Go play more magic. Yeah. Do things. Is that what he said? By Commander by, from Grand Slam. By Commander from Grand Slam. Com comics and collectibles. <laughs> it's no. really creepy. Um no, I'm I am I am satisfied. I'm cool. satiated. Um yeah, this is a fun episode. Well, so guys, up? thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for participating in our questions of the week and things like that. And thank you to Grand Slam for sponsoring everything. Keep an eye out for live streams. We've been doing that more and more on YouTube. We did one this past Sunday uh, with the Commander stuff, and we do have more planned. 
So we'll try and announce those when we plan to do them, mm-hmm. but generally it's sort of a last minute, hey, let's live stream yeah. sort of a thing. Sometimes those are not safe for work, just a fair warning. That's a fair warning. It is um, live and we, I mean, this is kind of live too, but. Yeah, but we edit, well, we censor ourselves when we go through this, but if yes. we've got a group of people together, just be aware that be words ready. slip out and so. Be uh, ready. They don't you're... slip, I throw them. <laughs> um, so just be prepared, that's all. Um, but other than that, uh, I think we're good. Yeah. You good? All right. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. Outro song. This is our outro song. We don't really throw so.